Tere hea PFTV vaataja, oleme sisse jõutama suut filmitaskord ja see kord jällegi natukene lähemalt tuleme meile Saksamaalt ja tegelikult kannab endas ka väga palju Itaalia sugemeid, kuna resissor on tegelikult sealt pärit. So, Elisa, Kim, wonderful to have you here. So thank you for coming and uh, as we discussed you're, you're going to stay here for a few days so I, I hope you really enjoy the festival itself. So uh, but uh, a little bit uh, let's poke uh, around in your personal life a little bit. Who is Elisa? Who is the person behind this film? Oh well there's a lot of people behind this film mm -hmm. and a few of them uh, were um, so kind to come to present the movie with me at the festival. Uh, I'm Elisa Misto, I'm the script writer and film director of the movie. And this is Kim Riedler, and she played one of my favorite roles, probably one of the few real antagonists in the movie. Um, but it's a lot of fun, actually, mm. as a character. All right. Uh, I know that there, you have Italian roots, uh, now I have ended up in Germany. Yes. It's, uh, uh, how, how would you say, the, does it... Um, uh, does it show on the screen also, uh, like uh, this uh, cultural difference between those two countries? That I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, th I hope so. From an aesthetic point of view, I hope so, I have mm -hmm. to say. I am much more um, um, near the Italian style, mm -hmm. especially from the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, the, the story is very German. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not only in German, but it's also, I think, uh, uh, it talks a lot about privilege and like a privileged society. And so I think it makes mm -hmm. sense that it's in Germany and not in Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the story itself, uh, is it fictional or is it uh, somehow closely connected to, to your lives somehow? No, it is fictional. I did um, shot, my first movie was a documentary and I spent two years in a mental hospital doing research and then shooting the documentaries. And um, right after that experience, I had to apply for the um, film school in uh, London and I had to write an idea about a script. And because I was coming from that experience, then I decided to set the idea in the um, mental hospital. But actually mm. the story evolved a lot uh, since then. It has been mm. 12 years. Mm. And so um, it becomes a little bit something else, but the background mm. of the mental hospital state. Twelve years developing it, it, it makes it very personal probably in, in many ways. It's a, quite a long time to write, to, uh, and probably it, it gives something to the story also or, uh, for its development. Yeah, I mean, you change as a person so much in, in 12 years, especially at that age. Mm. And, uh, and the story changed with you, definitely. And it's, mm. I think it's um, very challenging to have a subject and a story that you really want to tell. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that enthusiasm um, lasts 12 years. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but on, on the other side, if you manage, then you re recognize that it's something that you really wanted to say. And so mm. there's also something positive about mm. waiting for so long. Mm. And it, uh, it is a very interesting story, a, a very big contrast between the, the, these two women that we have in the main, main roles. So, uh, for you, Kim, um, does it touch, touch you somehow personally also? Like a, a bit the uh, relationship between, the, between the, those two women and uh, how, it, how the story develops? Um, yeah, of course it does. I think it always has to, in order to be part of a project, you have to somehow be emotionally interested in it. Mm -hmm. That's at least how I feel. So, yeah, it did touch me when I was reading mm -hmm. it. That's the reason why I wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, definitely a story that touches a lot of people and a lot of women, uh, most probably. Because, uh, like, uh, as we said, it's a, it's a story about two very different personalities coming together and, uh, and finding a, a friendship between them. So, so it's a, it is a very great story. I think I it's a say. lot about female friendship as well in the movie, actually. Mm -hmm. I think um, when I, I was starting to write the story, at the beginning it was a man and a, and a woman, like a patient and a male um, nurse. And then I recognized that very, um, like naturally, I, I decided that the nurse should be a woman. And, mm. I, and, they, and I recognized in the years after, I had a lot of years to think about it, <laughs> that um, somehow like most of the characters, somehow they always came out to be like, uh, like female. And also like the character of the nurse uh, of the Kim plays, like it could have been a man. Because I had the feeling I have to put more men in this film, there's mm. not enough female. But somehow naturally it came, it was about 
like women and um, mm. but in a very fun way and I remember that I once like I was in the at, on the set and like it was a big scene in in the clinic so there was like most of the actors were da there and I, I remember that I watched all these actresses and like they're all very tall especially they're all like <laughs> one head bigger than me you can't see it now but they're all very tall which is a big coincidence because and not all actresses no. are tall but yeah. in our film we have they were all ladies. tall and beautiful and they were all like you know all quite like I wouldn't say radical characters but maybe characters you're not so used to see in mm. the film unluckily and, and like so like you know standing there and like preparing for the scene and I, and I felt like it felt so right and not because I wanted to write a manifesto about that mm. it was just because it's natural that it should be like that as well mm. normally it's it's more male oriented mm. and uh, Kim you you as an actor uh, how does it feel to work with a more Italian uh, director for a change <laughs> uh, comparing to German directors well well I I am I'm half German and mm. half Yugoslavian, so this right. is like kind of familiar. So you have the Romanian roots in you also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's fine. Like um, I I I think that's why we get along yeah. well. Probably. I mean, it's we, true. We're both loud sometimes and emotional, <laughs> and we talk with our hands and whatever. Yes, that's true. <laughs> um, and black like humor, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I think. Um, I mean, I don't want to put Germans down in general, but uh, the, the Italian side obviously brings more of a sensuality to everything, which mm -hmm. is nice. Like, and I enjoy that about the film and about the work and um, mm -hmm. about the culture in general, I guess. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I Although think. Although my yeah. character, I think, is very German, like, very sticking to the rules. Like, German in the. In the negative stereotype, let's put it that way, because clearly I'm German and I don't. Yeah. Think so did you need? Did you need to like uh, pull back your roots a little bit and uh, like lift the German side? Oh, in I you? think I think I had to pull back my natural um, um, uh, emotionality, maybe. Yeah, passion about passion. things mm. because she is very. Um, um, she holds back everything. Like she doesn't really allow herself to feel a lot. Like she's very um, restricted with mm. like how she approaches life and people. Maybe due to her work, but definitely also due to um, it seems to be her way of surviving. I mm. don't know. Which um, I have a very different way of, of surviving and a different mm. um, compassion and empathy for people, maybe. And mm. um, so, yeah, I mm. had to pull that mm. back a bit. <laughs> and uh, maybe, uh, as, uh, as you said, that uh, it's like uh, you have to combine these uh, two uh, kind of different cultures and, uh, and backgrounds. Uh, I think it uh, reflects the world these days, maybe, in, in yeah. a way, and, uh, and the development of uh, German society also. And it, um, it comes natural. It's not like you actually feel like, oh, I'm yeah. stepping into something. It's, it just flows, you know? Mm -hmm. if, if we would all just live like that, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no... There's not such a big difference. We're still all human, and we can just have a conversation. Yeah. You know, it's just easy. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's an interesting subject because like, of, like very often people ask me, you know, it's uh, is it a German movie or an Italian movie? And of course, it's I mean, it's the language is German and it's shot in Germany and it's set in Germany and so on. So it has a lot of German aspects to it. But very interestingly, the people that are involved in the project, like Kim is, you know, half German. Uh, Natalia, the main protagonist, she's actually from Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, Luisa, the other protagonist, she's uh, actually from uh, Austria. Mm. Um, like the director of photography is Italian. Like no. so, it, it <laughs> was actually yeah, it was actually even like the people based in Berlin well, and yeah, that yeah. the mother tongue is German. Like they actually had uh, foreign roots, so. Mm. There was also an interesting aspect, and I asked myself if it was um, it was not a conscious decision, but if like on a subconscious level, maybe I mm. I go towards people that have a mixed background. Mm -hmm. So maybe because I I do mm. get along better, I don't know. But and I did ask myself yeah, that. And uh, I think it makes the the experience more international, like yeah. shooting wise, and and for the viewers also, uh, like. Uh, uh, we just had a discussion earlier with a director uh, who who said that uh, 
his uh, bear like born in Tehran, Iran. He moved to Canada and uh, now uh, li lives in Bolivia and yeah. made his ah. first uh, yes. <laughs> first uh, feature film in Bolivia yeah. also. And uh, and as we discussed that. Uh, the filmmaking is becoming more international. I think, and do you agree? Maybe it is like the new generation of filmmaking in many ways. I think we all have like many more inputs uh, from outside uh, nowadays than we had like 30, 40 years ago. Um, I, I still think, I mean, like nationality has, has also like culture, national culture has a value. I'm, mm. I'm not saying that, you know, we should yeah, all like be mixed and because mm -hmm. it would be also the same. But I think that influences and, and being open, so, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's definitely a value and I do think it's a, a value in cinema as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I think uh, that's the beauty of it, uh, mixing these different backgrounds and people without uh, losing their identity, just to make the, like a grand mixture of them all. Yeah, uh, at, uh, it's very enriching, I think, working yeah. with people from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. it also with actors from different backgrounds, I can tell, like, they, they just bring a different energy. And it's, you know, it's all about energy and acting in life as well, I guess. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really enriching and... Um, I wish there were more, like, uh, I hope there will be more European um, films that I can be involved in in the future, mm. like with different people from different backgrounds, or not only European, but yeah. this yeah. kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. what's happening at the moment, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's really beautiful to see yeah. these uh, mixtures uh, coming together and uh, without uh, without anybody losing their own identity in a way. Yeah. So yeah. Really, I think really the value is really it's not about like became this become the same. I don't think that's something I yeah, want to of go course. towards. Yeah. yeah. But I think like that finding like common values or mm -hmm. like in 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 a different backgrounds and a different culture and religion and so on. I think I mean that's what we should hope. Uh, for yeah. society, more not. Yeah. It's not about yeah. losing the mm -hmm. identity. It's really about finding out that people that yeah. are very different from you, they still have something in common with you, which yeah. is, you know, probably yeah. certain feelings and certain needs. And yeah, mm -hmm. I I totally agree that it only adds the value mm -hmm. uh, the, just to ha have this. But uh, a little bit from the picture side of the yes. film also. Uh, uh, I, I've always asked that. Uh, how much um, freedom to you gi give to your co-creatives, like uh, for example your DOP, like setting up the frames, the coloring of the film or the lighting. Do you dictate uh, much or do you uh, give a lot of freedom to your team? I think, um, well, I think I am somebody that can give a lot of, um, I wouldn't say freedom, but I can, I, I see myself as a director. I think if you're a really good director and you choose the right people for you and the movie, mm. then your job is to make the other people shine. Mm. So it's not about you and your ego, it's about them shining. It's about like saying what you want, mm. I, I want this, but then they, they find a way to get you there and mm. to give you there. I'm mm -hmm. not the one that should tell them like, oh, like play like that or do that or like light like that and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have, a, I'm, I'm very opinionated, I do have a strong yeah. Yeah, you um, have to idea way, and I yeah. think that's what is required as a director. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I don't know if it's real freedom, I think it's, it's more giving like a very clear direction mm -hmm. and, and structure and then mm -hmm. give people the freedom in, in that direction, in that structure to, to mm -hmm. give me that something, you know, they think it's, it's, it's authentic for them. Mm -hmm. and I think. Personally, I have the feeling that when I'm a good director, for example, with actors, I was able to do that. And mm -hmm. when I wasn't, then personally, I think you can see it. So, and mm -hmm. I think like, ah. Yeah, it shows up on the yeah. screen, actually. That's true. Yeah. And again, we ended up uh, in the same uh, same thing, that uh, finding common ground again. Uh, like uh, with these different nations, the same with your team members, you know. It's yeah. A, yeah. But in, in my experience, is also if you choose the right people and you have a clear idea, um, I never felt like I had to impose myself or mm. like um, not in you know, an egocentric way at least. So I had, I had, and it's. I think it's it's one of the best feeling I ever had in my life. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 really one of the most precious feeling. Is when you are in, in, in doing a movie and you recognize that the people truly understood what you want to do. Mm -hmm. and they give it to you like better than you imagine I, mm -hmm. I mean I, I get like 
Uh, it's, goosebumps. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's really like it's it's an it's an emotion that it's difficult to describe. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's very life affirming, and and you feel very privileged that this is happening to you in that moment. And uh, mm -hmm. and you have, I'm very thankful to the people that work with me. Mm -hmm. when, uh, and I, I it's, it's really a feeling of love. I do truly love them. <laughs> I, and <laughs> Good to hear. Yeah. And another very uh, important part of the film, uh, music. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, also it's a, it's a grand mixture uh, of uh, some very different compositions. Um, w what was the way, the, your way to that the solution? The well, uh, oh, there's so much to say about it. Um, but one thing was really, I grew up like in, in the 90s, like my, my in the 80s and 90s was really like when I was a teenage and, and I watched so many movies and they influenced me so much. And I am somebody, I first discovered movies and through mm. movies I discovered um, music. Um, mm. And then music became a big passion, but first was movies. And I remember mm. when I was a teenager that I would watch you know, a movie and then stop the VHS and so look at the, at the list of the songs, yeah, the song, and yeah. then I discovered so many bands <laughs> mm -hmm. like like that. Yeah. And I wanted to do a movie with a soundtrack like that. I want mm -hmm. to do a soundtrack with like music that I really love, and a mixture of licensing music mm -hmm. and original music uh, for the movie. I wanted like that kind of like pop, you know, like feeling mm -hmm. like that. I missed a little bit in mm -hmm. movies nowadays because mm -hmm. I think it's it's done less than yeah. it was done before. And um, I just, I think that was the main idea. And then, um, because the movie also took so long to be financed, uh, to develop and finance, and then be shot. Um, and I had a lot of the people on board quite early, so I had a lot of time to talk mm. with Sasha Ring about, you know, what we wanted to do. And interesting enough, he want, it, at the beginning he said this is not a movie for a soundtrack, original soundtrack, mm. it's a movie for licensing, so what should I do? Mm. And, um, and we had a long time to discuss about that and um, finally, hopefully, um, I convinced him to to the soundtrack, but a lot of time we would also sit together and go through our libraries and our favorite bands and songs mm. and, and like playing to each other and say like, look, that would be great for this scene. And that was also a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely something to, uh, that you brought along from the I Italian uh, movie yeah. making. It's, uh, it uh, has been yeah. always very strongly connected to the music uh, within them. So It's uh, true. Mm -hmm. But I, I think like, um, yeah, it's true. I mean, but I, there's also like, I mean, there's many directors that have like a, like a, a strong connection with the music composer. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite directors do have that. But I think it's also, for me, it's like music is movie and movie is music. I can't imagine movies without music. So mm -hmm. I do respect like the Haneke way of thinking, like mm -hmm. of there's no music outside of the mm -hmm. film world. And so I do really understand and respect mm -hmm. that, but it's, um, it's it's not where my mm. heart beats. My mm. heart beats with rock and roll and, and mm. music and like and, and movies that gives you really like you know like open up a new mm. like taste uh, and new bands and uh, mm. and a mixture between the two of them. Mm. And actually, I never th thought about it like this. That uh, it's very difficult to go uh, either way, you know, with music or without. It's uh, it's. Uh, uh, anyway, it doesn't make uh, make it s simpler. You know, it's it's still very difficult uh, to find the music uh, for the film uh, to make it work together with the picture, and then to make a picture without no music at all. It's a different, totally different challenge. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's it's um, it's not about one is better of the other. I think yeah, it's it just really it's it's what it's. I think for me it's uh, it's the movie that I like to watch, and I want mm -hmm. to do movies that I like to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure That's it's me. always the case, to be honest. <laughs> I, really, I really ask myself if it's always the case. I think uh, sometimes... Well, you hopefully it is. I mean, I why, don't know. why would you make something? I think as a director you feel pressure, like to have Sure, to yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. There's and also uh, fashion in films. Some, sometimes I mean, you yeah. also do something that is yeah. just handed to you. But, mm -hmm. it's but there's also fashion in, in, in films. I sure. mean, like, uh, like uh, that goes like in decades, unlucky. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you have the feeling you are, like your taste doesn't, you know, like fit at mm -hmm. the moment, the taste of the... And so you do feel pressure, like, mm -hmm. okay, should I change it? Or it's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, can I achieve anything? Like with that? But then at the end of the day, it's just, um, I can only do what I like, so mm. I think I'm very bad at stuff that I don't like. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. 
It's a and necessity. As, as Kim said, uh, like uh, connect the emotional connection to the story. You know, you yeah. do it much better if you feel for it. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, there's no reason to do something if mm -hmm. there's not something. You know that goes boom when you read it, I, I think. Like, yeah. I can convince myself intellectually to do something, but it will never turn out mm -hmm. well, I think. It's yeah. always good to go with your gut feeling, and you mm -hmm. know right away with a person, oh, we could work together, or I like you, or, or with a script and a character, and mm -hmm. you know, if there's something. And even, it doesn't always have to be, oh, I love this character, it can be, I'm scared of that character or mm. something, but if it does something to you, it's like almost 100% good to go with that and um, yeah. figure it out, mm -hmm. what it is, I think, yeah. Yeah, so you have to stick to the things that you love, let's say. <laughs> yeah. that's, a good, that's a good uh, <laughs> sentence to live by, I think. All right, <laughs> thank you, ladies. Wonderful you to so have much. you here. Thank you so much. Great, great conversation. So, Et siis kõikidele, meie kodustele vaatajatele, minge vaadakeks äärmiselt eluline lugu, mis seo mennas kokku Itaalia ja Saksa kinokunsti. Nii et palju head muusikat, ilused inimesi, tore lugu, minge vaadake.